in this video I'm gonna give you a ton of tips so that you too can experience what it's like to eat strawberries as they meant to be eaten right off the plant. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplify Gardening. I'm going to assume you're starting from nothing. The first thing we need to do is establish where we're going to get our strawberry plants from in the first place. Now, garden centers and other outlets, they'll have strawberry plants that are in like little cell trays, six at a time, and you can take them home and plant them. But that's not till usually later in the year when it's well into spring. At this time of year, we're talking the end of January, beginning of February. Well, then you have a couple of other options open to you. Firstly, you could buy bare root. Now, this is really good because the plants are already established, but they're dormant. And bare root, well, they, they're big plants, but because they're dormant, we'll need to plant them on into containers and then allow them to wake up. Another option would be to purchase them in plug plants. And these are plants that are already awake. They are growing very slowly, albeit, but as you can see, there is new leaves coming out there. Now, plug plants are fantastic because they're awake and it allows you to be able to get that plant going early now. Another option you may have is you may get plants from friends and family that have stored runners over winter. However you decide to get them, the choice is yours. I'm going to be talking about all sorts of strawberries today, but I'm going to be mainly planting up with plug plants. Now, caring for your strawberry plants after they've been delivered to you is quite important. Don't just leave them in the packaging until you're ready because at the end of the day, they're living plants. We need to open the box as soon as we get it and then we need to get these containers and we need to get them out and open so that the plants themselves can get a little bit of air and some light. It's not so much of an issue here about planting, but these roots here, as you will see, and the same thing with bare roots, they'll dry out. And the longer they're drying out, the more it sets that plant back. Not so much an issue for bare root. You do need to get that out and get them dealt with. Now, this variety is a very special variety. And I used to grow them all the time when my children were small. And they called Fragria Sweet Colossus. The reason for that, like the latter part of their name, these grow giant fruit. They are brilliant strawberries but the great thing is just because of their size you don't lose that sweetness because the middle part of their name is sweet and they are really sweet too so these like will make really good strawberries and um, my kids absolutely adored them but when i moved to this site i lost a lot of the plants from a fungal disease and um I were unable to get them, but I've got them again now. So we are going to set up a brand new bed with these. Now, as it's early in the season, I've decided to plant these plug plants up into some pots and allow them to have a really good start. Now, to do this, you simply just need to make up some compost. And what I have here is some sieved multi-purpose potting soil and I'm adding in some blood fish and bone which is an all-purpose feed okay so you're looking for something like a 10 10 10 or 12 12 12 on the MPK scale and then I've added in some perlite and that is to make this compost fall apart and um, allow the root systems to penetrate much easier and all we need to do with these is simply just put a little bit of soil in them. Take out a plant. We need to fill this tray with some of this compost. Firm it in because if you don't firm it in and that compost remains loose, then you will have a problem. And that's essentially it. And we can plant these out at a later stage. But for now, they can stay in my fruit polytunnel 
on these beds here and the great thing about these beds is they I have some sealed trays here with um, some matting in the bottom that holds moisture so these will get everything that they require and they won't dry out another tip to consider as well if you're doing this is you don't want them in really warm conditions they they need that cold period but um, we do want to get them just started off and as you can see these are small plug plants but um, they're already growing and that's the main thing and again there's another one so I'm going to carry on planting these as I talk to you and the next thing I want to speak about is where to plant strawberries now the good thing about strawberries is that they will grow almost anywhere they can grow really well in pots and containers in the ground in beds even in vertical towers uh, special trellis systems the troughs that you will have made so that fruit can hang down they will grow absolutely anywhere so you've got multiple options in in how you grow them but when you're ready to plant these out you want to allow them plenty of room to grow at least 18 inches between plants and probably around about three to four feet between rows and the reason for this is these plants like to send out runners and you want to give those plants room to be able to really get to a good size put out some good sort of space and attract that sunlight to not be crowded but as they put out runners they're going to need some space for them to set to so the next thing we need to talk about is soil preparation now when you're growing out in your garden beds or anything like that well you need to consider what the soil makeup is and um, just to give you some sort of idea strawberries well they need a ph of around about 5.5 to 6.8 a lot of those sort of ground soils aren't in that sort of favor they hate alkaline soils they really want it more acidic another thing that they hate is clay soils okay they really need a good free draining soil you will need to amend if you're if you're gardening in a clay soil like I am you're going to need to amend that with some form of grit or lots of compost and another thing you can do to help them is to plant them up on top of a mound and then that will also help in drainage too but um, you need to consider the, the soil amendments and likewise if you have a very sandy soil then these are going to dry out and they're not going to get the moisture they require so again uh, lots of compost will help with that as well at the time of planting out then you want to give the bed a good feed as well and as we discussed when I was making this up a good balanced fertilizer something like a, a 10 10 10 12 12 12 it doesn't matter what it is as long as it's a balanced slow release organic fertilizer and dig some of this about a pound for every sort of um, good size bed you know just get a good amount into that bed and what this will do is feed that bed over time now what I'm using is this this is blood fish and bone it looks a little bit like sand but it's literally just a, a blood meal bone meal and fish meal all combined and that's what we can get where I live you haven't got to have that just look for a balanced feed 10 10 10 12 12 12 it doesn't matter if it's 18 18 18 as long as it's balanced across the MPK range and then once you've dug that in plant your strawberries but in the initial stages strawberries use huge amounts of nitrogen and they you know they're putting on tons and tons of foliage so what we want to do at that point is also give them a few chicken manure pellets which are high in nitrogen doesn't have to be chicken manure but if anything that's high in nitrogen something like a 24 nitrogen or something like that would be perfect just to get them going if you're getting value from this video then do me a favor and go and give it a like because that will tell YouTube that this video is good and it will share it with more people so that others can also grow strawberries and get that really great taste that you just can't get from the shops when you're planting your strawberries out or you're planting them into pots and things like that whether it's in a bed a pot a barrel a tower whatever it's really important to plant them at the right depth 
they're different levels. Now, if we plant them too shallow, say here, what's gonna happen is the top of the crown is gonna dry out and the strawberry is going to struggle. If we plant them too deep, which is up here, then that crown is going to get too wet and it's going to rot. So we need to plant them at the right level. And the great thing about buying plants or plugs is you already have that soil level. So we can just plant up to the same level as of soil. But with bare root, we don't have that option. So it's really important that you get that nailed and at the right level so that you don't lose your plants. So when your strawberries start to fruit, well, we then need to change things a little bit because beforehand we were feeding with a high nitrogen feed to get that foliage to, to grow. But now we need to change it from nitrogen. We need to stop that altogether and we need to switch over to a high potassium feed. And that's going to allow the plant to pull in the potassium and use that in fruit production. We also need to up the watering as well because they will use huge amounts of water at this time. But the potassium is important. So remember, as soon as fruiting starts or as soon as you see those flowers appearing, that's an indication of cut out the nitrogen, start the potassium and uh, you will have really good plants. So just now I just spoke about watering very briefly when the fruit starts forming, you're gonna need to be watering these plants every single day. With a lack of water, the plants are gonna think that um, it's coming to the end of their season and they're gonna try putting out seed and they're gonna go dormant. So you really need to give them that water so that they can produce large fruit for us. And when they have the water, they will continue to bear fruit for that time. And incidentally, what I haven't said so far is that there are two types of strawberry. There's the June bearing strawberry and there's an ever bearing strawberry. And the ever bearing strawberries, well, they have things like, you know, the alpines and things like that. Well, they all are class as ever bearing, but what they will do is they will just give you fruits for a longer period. And it's a good way of drawing out the season of strawberries, but most of us will probably buy June bearing strawberries. But like I said, if you want to, there are uh, ever bearing strawberries that you can get. So you can buy packs from your garden centers that will include different varieties that will draw out the, the strawberry season for you. Let's talk about the life cycle of strawberries. And in early spring, strawberries, well, they're gonna burst into life and they're gonna put out lots of foliage. They're gonna start building up the energy as required to fruit and they'll do this till probably around about May and they will do it much quicker in somewhere that's protected like a polytunnel or a greenhouse okay so indoors you'll get a, a much earlier harvest but usually around about May they'll uh, do that and then they'll switch over to flowering and they will flower through the end of May and into June and you'll start seeing strawberries then sort of end of May into June. Some of them will be a little earlier while others will be a little bit later. It really depends on how you've planted them, when you've done it. Like I said, we've got these from plug plants that are already growing and we're now bringing them on in the tunnel and we'll put them out at a later stage. So they will have a really good start. They'll have a good sized root ball before they even know it. So sometime during fruiting, the plant is gonna to decide to start putting out runners. And if you still have fruit on the plants, you wanna remove these right the way up until your fruiting is finished. And then after that, you can allow the runners to appear and they act like little stems that come off the plant and there'll be a baby strawberry at the end of them. And you've got a couple of options. You can peg it there, it will root and you can dig it up and separate it from the mother later. Or you can fill a pot just like this and you can peg it to the pot so it's already in there for you. So it cuts out the step of disturbing that root system. Now, these strawberries may continue in like a chain fashion and you want to remove anything after the first strawberry plant, okay? You don't want to allow or plant up all the others because they are much weaker. They don't make for, for really good plants in the following years. The other thing about it is 
each plant you only want to allow it to put out three daughters because that will then allow energy the rest of the energy to go back into the plant for next year's crops after this point the strawberry is going to hit winter once the colder months come in it's going to die back like all perennials and the foliage will die right back and it will sit there dormant all over winter until we hit spring where it'll start the cycle all over again pests and disease well strawberries have their little enemies too and the first one of those being slugs um, there's nothing worse than having slugs boring through some pristine fruit and you come back the next day to pick it and that ripe strawberry is gone and the worst thing is they usually start on them just as they're starting to get ripe and uh, they're not quite ready for us but they're just perfect for slugs and putting down like a chopped straw mulch can actually attract those slugs in because it keeps it moist around it but the issue we have with that is we want to keep our fruit clean and off the soil so uh, straw mulch is pretty much a necessity but what we can do is control the area with something like nematodes and I'll put a link down in the description below for a video where I show you how to make your own slug nematodes at home so we want to protect them from slugs all right but the mulch is quite an important part we need it so there is a trade-off there the next thing as you can hear around here we have plenty of birds now there are things like thrushes robins and blue tits and uh, all sorts of birds around the world that absolutely adore those little red jewels sat on top of a nice yellow mulch and they you know they're literally crying to the birds eat me so we need to net against those. Now, when you're netting, you need to be really careful. It needs to be pegged down really tight so that the birds can't get in and get your fruit, but even worse, get tangled up in the netting. Another thing that strawberries will suffer with is fungal infections. And you see this towards the later part of the year and you'll start seeing brown spots appearing and then the edges of the leaves will turn brown. And a lot of people think that this is to do with autumn or fall setting in, but it's not. It's a fungal disease that comes on the back end of summer because it's warm and humid. And um, the best thing you can do at that point is to cut off any affected leaves and burn them. Don't put them in the compost because that fungal spore is transferable in soil, okay? Now, there are loads of different fungal diseases that strawberries can suffer from and they can start from as early as planting time. So I'm going to make a separate video later on this year and we're going to discuss those fungal diseases. But for now, all you've got to do is look at planting in the way we've suggested and give them the best start possible and you should avoid most of them. If you found value in this video, then you could subscribe here. And if you wanna learn 10 more tips for growing strawberries so that you can get that sweet taste that you just can't buy in the shops, well, this is the next video that you should watch. Don't forget, folks, on your way out, give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube will share it with more people. I'm Tony O'Neill, this is Simplified Gardening, where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. Remember, folks, you reap what you sow, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.